This painting resides in the Kensington Palace in London, England. And this boy with the curly brown hair wearing a green dress is Peter. The oak leaves and acorn he's holding on his right hand symbolizes his character and title, the wild boy. He was found deep in the forest in Hanover, Germany in 1725 by a group of people led by King George I. Initially, they thought they encountered a wild animal since the boy moved on all fours, much like how a dog walks. The boy was about 10 years of age, had curly hair, covered with dirt, and didn't have any clothes on. But there was one distinct feature that caught their attention, and that was his left hand. Four of the five fingers were fused together, much like a duck's foot. The boy didn't speak any languages and only made odd sounds. They were fascinated by him. They hadn't seen anything like him before, so they decided to take him back to their camp for a couple of weeks then leave him behind before heading back to England. The news of the discovery of the wild boy reached the Kensington Palace, and Princess Caroline, King George I's daughter-in-law, ordered the group to bring the wild boy to England so she could meet him in person. At the palace, he was given the name Peter, and his transition to the new lifestyle was quite a challenge. They wanted to transform him into one of them. They dressed him in proper clothing and tried to teach him how to behave like a civilized person. However, this was a difficult task. The servants who were assigned to look after him had a hard time making him put his clothes on. In fact, it took several hours and quite a lot of manpower just to get him to wear the clothes. Apart from forcing him to dress up, they were quite carefree. They let him do his own thing and they merely observed him. At the dining table when it was time to eat, they found him to be quite strange. In an environment where people used utensils to eat their food, Peter used his hands and often made a huge mess. When it was bedtime, even he was given his own room with a proper bed, Peter still preferred to curl up and sleep in the corner of the room. For the first couple of days, this was how they approached him, but in order to make drastic changes, they knew they needed to have proper communication with him. And so Caroline assigned Dr. Arbutnot, the man on the right of Peter, as his English teacher. Unfortunately, after many hours and multiple days of teaching him, he couldn't get down the basic pronunciation of the alphabet letters. His voice was slurred, and when he tried to speak, it was almost impossible to understand him. At the end, Dr. Arbutnot gave up on the lessons. Even though Peter had a very hard time learning the English language, he was very talented when it came to music. He could easily learn and hum the melody of a song after just hearing it once. He was able to quickly follow up with different notes from several instrumentals and truly enjoyed the sound of music. Sadly, after the passing of Princess Caroline, his stay in the palace was cut short. Peter was passed around to a number of people. First, he was entrusted to one of the Queen's bedchamber women in exchange for a pension. After that, a farmer named James Fenn took him in and moved in the parish of North Church in Hertfordshire. His situation here was a lot better. He enjoyed the outdoors and was able to run freely on the fields and interact with the animals. He became much more of himself, being in the environment which he was accustomed to. Although he was quite familiar with the surroundings of the farm, there was one case where he got lost in the summer of 1751. Mr. Fenn and his neighbors posted many missing poster signs throughout the area and thankfully, after several days, he was found. After this, he was given a collar, and it had an address and his name printed on it. It reads, Peter, the wild man of Hanover, whoever will bring him to Mr. Fenn at Berkhamstead, Hertfordshire, shall be paid for their trouble. Even though he wore a collar, much like a pet, Mr. Fenn and the neighbors treated him like a normal human being, and he was free to do whatever he wanted. After the passing of Mr. Fenn, he was transferred to his brother Thomas Fenn at another farmhouse. Here, as an adult, was where he got most of his development. He could now utter his name, Peter, when asked what his name was, and he could also count from 1 to 10. This place was where he stayed the remainder of his life. Throughout the years, many questioned why he acted like that when he was found. People back then thought he was merely an animal in a human body. But in 2011, with a modern understanding of cognitive disabilities, 
It is believed that Peter suffered from a rare genetic disease called the Pitt-Hopkins syndrome. It is a condition characterized by intellectual disability and developmental delay. Scientists ended up with this conclusion by analyzing his appearance on the painting. The condition shared distinct facial features, for instance. Peter had a deep cupid bow lip, flared nose, curly hair, drooping eyelids, and short stature. Combine this with the minimal speech, it is believed he had the very rare genetic disorder. Regardless of this, he was well liked among the community. They enjoyed his company in the farm, and he brought joy to many. So when he passed away, the locals paid for his gravestone. The story lives on, and even today, people still place flowers on his grave.